YouTube seems to be trying to restrict the supply of ad space because the demand is staying the same. And if they get rid of 95 plus percent of the ad space, what's going to happen? The end is nigh. YouTube is going to be removing the vast majority of channels from the partner program. If you've been following the news over the past few days, you'd have heard that channels that have less than 1,000 subscribers and less than 4,000 viewer hours will no longer be eligible for the partner program. And that means many small channels, many small channels, are going to lose out on revenue that may be between 100 and 500 or so dollars. So that can be pretty significant to a lot of creators if at some point throughout the year you might get a couple hundred bucks. Now, in light of this, I want to give a shout out to my sponsor, Virtual Shield. Virtual Shield is a VPN, it's a virtual private network. It can give you a simple layer of security. It can help encrypt your traffic so that it's harder for people to spy on you. And if you go to virtualshield.com slash Timcast and use the promo code Timcast, you will get 20% off when you sign up for this VPN. So keep in mind, no security is ever perfect, but getting a VPN is something simple you can do to help keep yourself protected, at least to a certain degree. And I gotta give special thanks to Virtual Shield when we're facing this, this wave of demonetization, and even right now I'm talking about demonetization, it's, it's awesome to know that there are companies out there that are willing to get on board and help support me doing the work that I do. So it's particularly relevant with everything that's happening right now. Because as I mentioned just before going into that promo, YouTube is going to be removing around 95% of channels from the partner program. So on Tuesday, the 16th, just two days ago, Google put out a new approach to YouTube monetization, where they said, there's no denying 2017 was a difficult year with several issues affecting our community and our advertising partners. We are passionate about protecting our users, advertisers, and creators, and making sure YouTube is not a place that can be co-opted by bad actors. While we took several steps last year to protect advertisers from inappropriate content, we know we need to do more to ensure that their ads run alongside content that reflects their values. As we mentioned in December, we needed a fresh approach to advertising on YouTube. Today, we are announcing three significant changes. Their first announcement, stricter criteria for monetization on YouTube. After careful consideration and extended conversations with advertisers and creators, we're making big changes to the process that determines which channels can run ads on YouTube. Previously, channels had to reach 10,000 total views to be eligible for the YouTube Partner Program. It's been clear over the last few months that we need the right requirements and better signals to identify the channels that have earned the right to run ads. That's why starting today, new channels will need to have 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 hours of watch time within the past 12 months to be eligible for ads. We will begin enforcing these new requirements for existing channels in the YouTube Partner Program beginning February 20th, 2018. So as I mentioned, that's channels that have less than 1,000 subs and less than 4,000 viewer hours. So I decided to go and look for some channels that have around 1,000 subs to figure out where they rank in the total subscriber count, and then do the math to figure out how many channels are being removed by YouTube. So first, according to Sidekick, when you Google search, how many YouTube channels are there? This site pops up, how many YouTube channels are there? About 50 million. And this article is from August 4th, 2017. So I looked for a YouTube channel that had exactly 1,000 subscribers. Now keep in mind, they, they also say 4,000 watch hours, which is a bit harder to track. And I, I tried doing some math, but it's, it's hard to find channels specifically. But let's just go by subscriber count. So this channel has 1,000 subscribers. Let's run them through an analytics site to see exactly where they rank. According to Social Blade, this channel with exactly 1,000 subscribers is the 2,358,713th in the subscriber rank. Meaning, out of 50 million channels, this channel with exactly 1,000 subscribers ranks at around 2.3 million. So let's do some simple math. Let's do 2358714, divide that by 50 million, and what do we get? 4.717428. That means about 95.3% of channels are being removed from the partner program. 95%. Now granted, this is all just wild estimates. This is based on if there actually are around 50 million channels and if at 1,000 subscribers you rank around 2.3 million, that means everybody below that rank, which is 95% of YouTube channels, will no longer be eligible for the partner program. Now, even this channel I'm showing you, 
doesn't meet the criteria of 4,000 watch hours, at least as far as I can tell. And the reason for it, it's not because the channel isn't getting views. Actually, the channel is getting views. This channel in the last 30 days got 8,000 views. So if he made a video that was 10 minutes long, in the last 30 days, if everybody watched it to the end, that would be about 80,000 minutes. However, the videos on this channel are actually short, between 30 seconds and a couple minutes. So unfortunately, this channel hasn't reached 4,000 watch hours in the past year, meaning even with 1,000 subs, he is not eligible. So it's safe to say that the number is actually greater than 95% of YouTube channels being removed from this program. Now, there's been a lot of discussion as to why that might be. Some people are saying that, look, one of the big complaints YouTube has had is that they can't monitor all of the content being uploaded. Also, a lot of these channels are really old and haven't uploaded in years. So why should they, why should they be running ads in the first place, especially if people are never going to see them? But it's kind of confusing because if nobody sees it, nobody pays. So I don't necessarily understand the, the entirety of what YouTube's doing. I mean, there's a lot of stuff behind the scenes that we'll never know. But one thing I've always said is that YouTube seems to be trying to restrict the supply of ad space because the demand is staying the same. And if they get rid of 95 plus percent of the ad space, what's going to happen? Advertisers are going to be competing for a much smaller island to appear on. Now, some have argued it's a good thing. People are saying, I'm, I'm hoping my CPMs go up. CPM is how many, how, basically how much money you get per thousand viewers. And their assumptions that if advertisers are competing and spending more money in auction to get ad space, that means the amount of money YouTube creators make will go up. At the same time, YouTube didn't stop there. Back on their blog, they said, size alone is not enough to determine whether a channel is suitable for advertising. We will closely monitor signals like community strikes, spam, and other abuse flags to ensure they comply with our policies. Both new and existing YouTube partner program channels will be automatically evaluated under this strict criteria. And if we find a channel repeatedly or egregiously violates our community guidelines, we will remove that channel from the YouTube partner program. As always, if the account has been issued three community guidelines strikes, we will remove that user's account and channels from YouTube. And there it is. The treadmill is speeding up. One of the biggest complaints that YouTubers have had for a long time is that with YouTube, it seems like you're walking on a treadmill. And every so often, YouTube makes a change or tweaks the algorithm, which increases the speed at which you have to run on that treadmill. You may have noticed I produce a video every single day. I have not taken a day off since I officially started dedicated to YouTube, which was around February of last year when I went to Sweden. I have made a video every single day with the, with the rare exception of doing live breaking news where I didn't actually have time to edit because I was streaming for several hours. So I don't wanna make it seem like those were skip days. Those were actually significantly more difficult to be out in the field. I have not taken a day off. You, know, you wanna know why? Because we know that the moment you stop running, you get thrown off the back of the treadmill. I don't wanna call it any channel specifically, but there are channels that I've subscribed to for a long time where when the creator has taken a break or taken a vacation, their views have dropped off by 90% or more. There's a channel that I watched a long time ago, 150, 300,000 views per video, doing a video once per month. All of a sudden, pff, dropped straight off. Now they're getting about 10,000. And there's a lot of reasons for this. One, the creator took a break. Another reason could be that YouTube changed the algorithm to benefit creators who produce more frequently, and that's what we believe to be happening. That means if you wanna make it on YouTube, if I wanna make sure that when I put out a video, YouTube tells you I did, I have to make a video every single day. And right now we're watching this change happen again, where 95 plus percent, an estimate, are being thrown off the back of the treadmill. Keep in mind, a lot of these people sat down, fell asleep, fell off the treadmill a long time ago, but there are creators who have small channels who are passionate, are dedicated, who are being removed. Now, am I to believe that YouTube is simply going to stop there? Or are we going to get to a point where they dedicate all of their ad space to top tier premium channels, of which I rank at around 40,000. Does that matter to YouTube? Am I in the bottom rung? Based on what we've seen with YouTube over the past several years, I can only assume that the treadmill will speed up again at some point because there are too many creators. Now, some people have said that throwing the extra weight off the back, these 47 million channels will actually allow the rest of us to slow down a little bit, that we won't have to rush. Because the idea of producing consistently damages channels like animation channels and documentary channels. I primarily produce documentary and live streams for most of my career. 
Unfortunately, that doesn't work on YouTube because you need to produce all the time and it's difficult. And it's one of the reasons you see the great success of Logan Paul, Casey Neistat, I should say Jake Paul as well, because they produce nonstop. Basically every day they're making a TV show. And if people watch it and it's consistent, YouTube rewards them. It rewards them for a lot of other things too, and I don't want to get into that. But the point is, I would only assume that in the future, the treadmill will once again speed up. And I'm scared that I will get thrown off the back of it. So at that point, is it worth investing in being a creator on YouTube? I just don't know. I'm certainly not going to stop. I think there is value here, and I'm hoping, I'm willing to make that bet that it works out in the future, but it is scary. Well, there might be some good news on the horizon because in December of 2017, a story came out from CBS, Amazon may be mulling a rival to YouTube. Is Amazon considering creating a rival to YouTube? Given a spat it's having with the website's corporate parent alphabet, it might just be. And some recent trademark filings from Amazon are heightening speculation that Amazon could dive into yet another industry. The December 5th Amazon Tube and OpenTube applications use identical language to describe software and a mobile application used for the transmitting, accessing, receiving, uploading, downloading, encoding, decoding, streaming, broadcasting, sharing, displaying, formatting, manipulating, organizing, bookmarking, tagging, storing, caching, and transferring electronic works via portable electronic devices, handheld devices, electronic reading devices, portable media players, mobile phones, smartphones, portable digital devices, computers, and other communication networks. According to blogger Philip Swan, who broke the trademark filing story on his website, The TV Answer Man, the Amazon applications appeared the same day that Google warned consumers who use the YouTube app on Fire TV devices that it would remove the app effective January 1st. Both companies have said they're trying to resolve their disagreement before the end of the year. However, Amazon has yet to put Google's Chromecast on its site as it promised to do last week, according to Swan. There's already alternatives to YouTube. There's, for one, there's the crypto site, DTube, which is also a part of Steemit. There's Vimeo, which is actually one of the highest ranked websites in the world, but for some reason, YouTube just dominates. Could Amazon actually compete? I don't know. But I will say if Amazon launched an alternative to YouTube and its function and form were all there, I would probably upload to both platforms. I would. Amazon is a contender. Amazon can go toe to toe with Google. Now, I don't like the idea of Amazon becoming an even larger monopoly where the CEO of the company is one of the richest people on the planet. I think he might be the richest person on the planet. I don't know. I don't want to get into that. The point is Amazon is a massive company and very similar to Google in a lot of ways and monopolies are bad. However, if Amazon launches a competitor to YouTube and it's viable, we will see the shattering of the monopoly. And that is a good thing for free expression, for free speech and for everybody. Now let's go out with one more quick story that I just want to address really quickly. The Guardian has a story, YouTube small creators pay the price of policy changes after Logan Paul scandal. Okay, so Logan Paul filmed a dead body in the suicide forest and he was criticized to no end. He lost a lot of perks and privileges. It was generally considered to be a very, very bad thing this person did and he apologized. So if you want to accept his apology, it's up to you. The point is, what we're seeing right now is not the result of Logan Paul. If this policy change is going into effect in a month, it's likely YouTube has been planning this for a long time. YouTube has frequently complained they can't keep up with all the videos being uploaded to the platform. Therefore, they had to do something about it. And this is likely that plan. I would estimate that this has been in the works for six months or more. And they're just now ready to announce it. So I, I guess in my opinion, I think Logan Paul is off the hook on this one. And people accusing him of being the cause of this problem are just probably wrong. Although what he does is a contributing factor, I'm sure, and things he's done in the past and things other creators have done like his in the past have certainly led us to where we are today. The suicide forest is probably not the reason for this, but let me know what you think. Do you love YouTube? Do you hate YouTube? Is it a viable platform? Are we all screwed? And do we need to jump ship? Comment below, we'll keep the conversation going. One last shout out to my sponsor because in light of all of these problems and demonetization and the treadmill throwing everybody off, I'm proud to say that Virtual Shield is helping support the work that I do. So go to virtualshield.com slash Timcast. You'll get 20% off on the VPN service. I really appreciate it, guys. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you all tomorrow at 4 p.m.